Hi, this is KB3FXI. Today we're going to talk about NBEMS, FL Digi, and FLMSG configuration and operation. FLMSG is a helper application that works along with NBMS FL Digi uh, to automatically detect, extract, and open uh, messages that are sent in form based messaging styles. Okay, and the next thing you want to do. Uh, for the configuration is in FL Digi, go to Configure, Miscellaneous, select the NBMS tab. For the NBMS data file interface, you always want to have this check marked here for Enable. This is an optional setting that if you wanted to have the message folder pop open automatically when you receive and extract messages, you can have that set. I have it disabled on mine. And then for the reception of FLMSG files, uh, we want to have open with FLMSG. That means that the FLMSG program will automatically open uh, with the message in it. And if you wanted the authentic form-based view um, and have that pop up in your browser, you can also select that. And We'll go ahead and check that in this instance. Um, the most important setting here, and probably the more difficult one for people that aren't really that familiar with navigating their uh, file structure in their computer. Uh, what you have to do is you have to locate the FLMSG executable. So you click on this button and it'll take you into your file structure. Now I'm already on the spot but you might start out on your on your C drive and you're gonna have to find your program files and then you're gonna have to uh, find the the uh, right FLMSG uh, uh, version which in this case is this one here. And you have to double click into the folder and then click on the actual executable application file. And once you've done that, click open. That puts this file path into this directory here. And that's how that the software can find the uh, uh, executable to open it up and open automatically with FLMSG uh, software program. So we'll click save and close on that. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder shortcut uh, for the desktop. So we're going to go to FL Digi, we're going to go to File, Folders, and then we're going to go to FLMSG Files. And I'm going to go and double click into Wrap. Now you'll see I've added a whole bunch of uh, different folders here for uh, my own reference uh, sake and for, for organizing the data that I receive and send. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to uh, the receive and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say create shortcut and you can see there's my receive shortcut and I'm going to drag and drop that right down on my desktop. So now I have a quick uh, reference uh, on the desktop to uh, go into my receive folder to see all the received uh, folders that I've uh, files that I've sent or received. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is the setup uh, configuration for FLMSG. So you just open up your FLMSG, go to configure. First thing we'll do is select our formats for date and time, and you can pick whichever uh, uh, formats that you want for the year, month, date, and hour and minutes. That's the configuration I have there for mine. Uh, next thing is on, uh, we'll go to radiogram next. Um, you want to make sure even if you don't use the radiogram that you have at least your call sign filled in here. That's where the software uh, goes for your call sign for uh, making the, um, the file name and so if you want your call sign in the file name that you send, uh, that's where you have to enter that in. But I've entered in all the rest of my information there also. And then lastly, we want to go to Files. And this box I would recommend having checkmarked. So what happens is when you create an FLMSG file, uh, when you open the, the uh, uh, or when you export the uh, message uh, to your send box, uh, it will aut automatically open up the uh, file folder uh, when you do that. And we'll give you a demonstration of that right now. Uh, so I'm going to hit close on this. And I'm going to just open up the uh, uh, blank form here, which is where we're at. And I'm going to uh, just paste in uh, 
some weather data that I pulled off the National Weather Service site. So now if I want to go ahead and send this message, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to arrow down over Wrap and then Export and I'm going to click on that. And what I usually do is, you can see here, there's my call sign as part of the file name. This is the year, month, date, and then also the minutes and seconds in Zulu. And what I usually do is add a little bit of a description on here. So I'm going to add um, PA, or, or I'll add Pittsburgh National Weather Service conditions. And now I'm going to hit Save. It's going to open up my wrap send folder and I'm gonna go ahead and save that again and now you can see my folders opened up and I'm ready to go and there's that's the file that I just created okay so now that we have our message created uh, and in the folder in the send folder in order to send, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to usually put in my call sign first. And if it's uh, two of a uh, monitoring frequency, I'll say QST and BMS. And then all I'm going to do is take and drag this message into the send box. Go down, uh, put a, uh, a DEKB3FXI on the end. I'm going to hit my Receive tab so I'm on the macro and put the Receive thing in. Now all I'm going to do is hit uh, Send. And uh, it's going to walk through, you know, go through the uh, transmission of the entire text. And on the other end, uh, hopefully the receiving station receives that with 100% copy and the message pops up automatically. Uh, so that will be uh, part of the next uh, demonstration that we show is on the receiving end. Okay, I have a friend of mine, Harry W3YJ, is standing by on a local repeater. Uh, he's going to send an ICS213 message. Uh, first thing I want to point out is that um, right now I just have the only program I have running is FL Digi uh, and my my uh, another email uh, client that has nothing to do with the demonstration. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to receive this message and you're going to see the FLMSG um, uh, program pop up automatically along with the display in the uh, web browser. So we'll call Harry, have him send the uh, 213 and we'll watch uh, this in action and then I'll reply to the message. W3YJ KB3FXI, I'm ready to copy Harry. Uh, Harry, I was going to copy one from you and then respond. Okay, so we'll see the first thing is going to happen is the diddle here is going to go away. You see there's a little bit of delay from when the uh, uh, bar comes up there for receive and here comes our actual text. You'll see the wrap begin tag here. That activates the software so you see extracting down here. The software is extracting the, uh, uh, the file and uh, it's going to save and display that automatically. And at the end of the uh, transmission here the uh, message should pop up. There's our FLMSG window, and I'm going to uh, show you that. Okay, perfect copy there, Harry, and I'll be replying back with a message here shortly. Um, so there's our FLMSG window with the, with the uh, message. Also, you notice that popped up automatically in my uh, default web browser. And so there's the authentic look and view of the uh, general uh, message ICS213. And if I wanted to print this up, all I'd have to do is print this from my web browser and hand that off to an emergency official or a served agency. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the 213 and we're going to go from the originator to the responder tab here. And I'm just going to simply acknowledge the message. And I'm going to click in the uh, date section here and the time, and that automatically imports the time and date uh, from your clock setting on the computer. So it's important that you have your comp computer clock set properly. Put my signature here. OK. 
Okay. And then I'm going to say File, Wrap, Export. I'm going to go ahead and accept this name. There's Harry's uh, call sign in this message, and I'm responding. So I'm going to hit Save. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this message. First, I'm going to say my call. I'm going to drag this message down into the transmit window. Put my call on the end. Okay, and we'll call Harry back. W3YJ, KB3FXI, you ready for the uh, our response message here? Okay, Harry's ready, and I'm going to hit the uh, Receive button at the end of my text here. So now all I have to do is uh, to transmit is key up my mic next to the uh, uh, speaker on the computer, and uh, hit the Transmit button, and we'll go ahead and do that and see how Harry re Harry uh, receives this. These are pretty short messages. We do some pretty long ones. Um, sometimes we'll send spreadsheets, uh, uh, very long detailed messages. Okay, W3YJ from KB3FXI. How copy, Harry? Okay, very good. Thanks very much, Harry. So that's the uh, demonstration of the uh, FLMSG message. Hope that helps out. I um, think the shortcuts for the folders and uh, just seeing the workflow kind of helps to make things easy. If anybody has any questions on anything, feel free to give uh, me an email at kb3fxi at yahoo.com uh, or look us up on www p-a-n-b-e-m-s dot org. Uh, my call sign's good on qrz.com and under my profile there's a link to that address and I believe my email address too. So thanks very much, 73. Have fun playing with the NBMS uh, emergency communication software.